In the Clive Barker podcast, longtime fans Ryan and Jose interview guests, bring you the news, and take deep dives into Barker related stuff. In episode 457, we go over the new Entrada Nightbreed soundtrack two disc CD release. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and advocate of his art. But Don's unique and inspiring paintings are for sale, and over 50% of the proceeds go to the Arts and Medicine program at the Texas Children's Cancer Center. There's even a paver in Washington, D.C. representing Celebrate Imagination. We're thrilled that this worthy cause is sponsoring our podcast again this year, and we hope that you'll consider looking over the Etsy shop to buy one of his original paintings or books. Follow the link in the show notes or click the side banner and let's see what's new with Don Bertram today. Check out Stained Glass Tulip on his Facebook page and also check out his videos going over the original paintings, the Bug Brothers, and his intro to the 35th anniversary screening of Hellraiser. On his Etsy shop, you can still find the original paintings, the Stargazer, the Folk Singer, The Pearl, Balancing Act 2, Mother and Child 2, The Portal 2, Top of the World, and don't forget about his books, The Chimney Sweep's Tale, and Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination, and The Imaginaries. Okay, welcome. This is uh, episode 457 of the Clive Barker Podcast. Good afternoon, Jose. How's it going? Hey, Ryan. I'm doing good. I just uh, had a busy morning. It's a Sunday as we record this, and uh, I just came from helping some friends take down a circus tent. <laughs> yeah, I saw that picture. That's yeah. that's uh you don't hear that very often. Yeah, some uh, people um uh, friends of mine that I used, usually go to their place, it's called Whiz Bang Theater and they um they were in part of a big festival in downtown Cleveland, uh the Border Light Cleveland Festival and so they had a little temporary tent um with their circus acts. And then today we were just taking that down and we got going to do that in like maybe a couple hours. So it was, it was pretty quick and easy. Wow. And now I'm here back to talk about the night breed. Oh, speaking of, of uh, phrases you don't hear very often. I, I like to think about those. I was at a birthday party because one of Joel's friends, they moved across town and they had a birthday party. So we all went there and one, it was, there's a million people there. And there was one time where somebody said, Okay, who put the pickle on my dog's back? He's running around with a pickle on his back. <clears throat> so I, so then I said, you know, that's a phrase you don't ever hear. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. What? How does a how does a pickle stay on a dog's back? It must have been a fuzzy dog, I guess. Yeah, big. Maybe he had yeah. a broad back. <laughs> it's like a sliced pickle or a whole pickle. I I didn't see it. I just heard that. So in any know. case, that sounds like a great party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, the episode today, we're kind of re- we're kind of doing live to tape, I guess, so to speak, because, uh, you know, to minimal editing so we can get this out today. Uh, so we're doing this over Zoom. And so if you hear us saying more ums and ahs than usual, it's because there's not so much editing. But right. we'll, uh, try. We're, we'll try to yeah. be more succinct. Yeah. And we're we're talking about the new two disc release of Nightbreed from Intrada. Looks like this. Nice. Uh, it's got it's got a reversible cover too, so you can actually make it look just like the old soundtrack that looks like this if you if you reverse the cover. Oh yeah, I didn't I didn't notice that. Hey, yeah. great point. Yep. There's the MCA original cover and then the new cover for the 2024 release. So I really like this release, but there's one thing, you know, right off the bat that I wanted to mention. And I don't know if this is a monetary thing or what's going on, but uh, it seems like Clive Barker's Nightbreed, the Clive Barker part, has been sort of edited off the title right there. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. And- and I, you know, is that kind of like where, hey, if we don't put his name on there, we don't have to pay a, like a royalty or a no, licensing I think, fee? Or... I don't think that's got to do anything with that. Because look, the other cover, the reversible one, has Clive Barker's Nightbreed on it. Yeah, but if you look maybe at was, the spine, it doesn't say Clive Barker's Nightbreed either. Maybe it was more like a packaging choice, I guess, marketing choice. Yeah. Maybe that's they didn't a small have the logo. That's the, 
that's a small thing yeah. unless it's not but as far as i know it's a small thing i guess it's um, just because it's danny elfman i guess they wanted to put the name there to uh since it's mm-hmm. a soundtrack to to give it a little more uh yeah not be as distracting yeah and and boy i mean th- I guess if we're getting d- diving into it, uh, the the first disc, the cues and stuff are like, oh my god, those are these are so great! I wish the original release had all this stuff. Um, especially track five photos. I don't even yes. remember hearing that one before. Even that's when the uh, movie. That's when they're looking at the victim photos, right? Uh, mm-hmm. In uh, Decker's office, I believe. Yeah. I um I've heard that that was pretty particularly striking too. I was listening to that last night, and I remember the photos was one that I noticed. Like, yeah, we we barely even noticed that, but uh, it does seem to transmit this uh, anxiety, and uh, it's got a lot of violins yeah. and stuff, and it's kind of um, it's very somber because we're looking yeah. at photos of dead bodies and stuff. But uh, and I think it makes accused. some changes and transitions that you don't hear in the movie because it's a shorter shorter scene than the than the music. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Uh, listening to this, it was almost like I was listening to the whole movie uh without dialogue. Uh yeah. for the first CD at least. The first CD is the complete all the cues. Then mm-hmm. the second CD is the regular MCA soundtrack released in 1990 plus some extras. Uh, which uh, they're about 21 minutes of extras apart from the 46 minutes original soundtrack album. And those extras are mostly like they have the waltz then they have uh, a music called party. uh, Yeah. And uh, Danny Elfman recording a waltz is like, it's, it's a really short, like just a few seconds of Narcisse dancing with that corpse. Yeah. But it's it's actually, um, a minute and a half or three and a half minutes in the yeah. uh, in this CD release. Yep, three hundred uh, three minutes twenty six seconds for the waltz. Uh, yeah, that, that's right. That's when uh, we see Narcisse dancing with that skeleton. Mm-hmm. That uh, Hugh Ross, when he described that scene, he called it nectar. That it was a lot of fun to do that. Yeah. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of like country songs here. Country Skin has a lot of different uh, mm-hmm. versions. You got Home on the Range. Which is kind of like sounds like a little Christmassy, right? I wonder if the home on the range was like playing in the background in the bar where Lori was at, maybe. It could be, yeah. Yeah. But when she's talking to uh, her uh, other friend that she meets at the bar. Mm-hmm. Right. It yeah. could be that in the background, sure. Yeah. You got the country and, um, skin fast version. Uh, and slow version. Medium version and slow version. Yeah, there's three versions yeah. of that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's that's a lot of interesting stuff. And I wonder if they couldn't get permission to use Johnny Get Angry on here. Oh, good point. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe that... who who was the band for Johnny Get Angry? Was it Danny Elfman or was it like not related to him at all? Is that maybe why it's not on here? That's a good point. I don't know. Maybe maybe yeah. uh, some of our uh, former guests in the podcast uh, are able to answer that question. We could probably try yeah. to get in touch with someone like the the and bobby you know, publicist definitely... or and bobby or something like... yeah and bobby probably would know who the band was yeah you're right mm-hmm. sure and then there's a little booklet right so it yeah. uh it's a little booklet it opens with a quote about midian it says midian it's where the monsters go it takes away their pain that's a narcisse quote yeah and then it goes a little bit into uh, denny elfman's career right yeah and it and it talks about um Clive Barker and making this movie and and it gives the the um the plot of the movie which I don't know I don't I didn't really need that I don't know if I mean maybe there's Danny Elfman collectors out there that may not have seen the movie or may sure. not remember it that well they're not like super super fans like of, of the movie maybe they're super fans of Danny Elfman that are buying this I think the opening is interesting because it kind of shows how both Danny Elfman and Clive Barker come from uh similar they were they were approaching this uh, story and uh music from similar uh sensibilities yeah and, uh, i did like that that it, it, and i liked hearing about how danny elfman liked to seek out soundtracks with uh, sympathetic monsters which is like this is the perfect movie for that sure i mean he's got i think dark man edward scissorhands hellboy you know a yeah. nightmare before christmas he's scored yeah. all those they all have 
characters, main characters, protagonists that could be arguably uh, described that way. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, I I really like this is is especially this the parts reading about uh, Danny Elfman's you know history and and his feelings about this soundtrack. I thought that was really cool. Um, I think the uh, the description of Occupy Midian and you know what happened with the director's cut is a little thin and Mm -hmm. um, and not quite a hundred percent accurate. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. They 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 talk about uh, the production a little bit about the production, the budget that they had for this, Morgan yeah. Creek, and all of that. And uh, but yeah, but then they also go into that uh, more specific instrumentation that they used mm-hmm. for this. Like they talk about yeah. how Danny Elfman was into the Balinese gamelan, and yeah. he had studied the Javanese gamelan at UCLA. So yeah, you know, uh, he he brought that into Nightbreed. And and, uh, and also, he said that I think was it the Brazilian pan flute or it was some South American country pan flute. Yeah, the pan flute uh, for South America. Yeah, yeah, you do hear that in the beginning, right? That oh yeah, yeah, and and it was really interesting reading that this movie has a two note refrain that it kind of builds off of with each of these songs, which is something you kind of know instinctively, but I never really thought about it. I can I guess because I'm not a musician, right? But um, but it's true that it is it does kind of do two notes at the beginning and then kind of builds off of that, which is it, I think that was really interesting. Yeah, like, yeah, it's such duh, that. Duh. Duh. Yeah, and then it goes back to two, but in a different tone, and then mm-hmm. keeps. Yeah, it's great. It's good <laughs> yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, yeah, with with Dream, the track Dream is the the music that we hear when he's dreaming about the gates of Midian, you know, the, yeah. the whole like the, I dreamt him. Yeah, like chan, yeah. Chan, da, 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 lots of trumpets yeah. and stuff, lots of yeah. dynamic uh beats and stuff. Um yeah, it says here um Dream has well percussive piano and brass, first appearance of a beast theme. Here in pursuit of Boone as he as a devilishly grinning, undulating night breed beckon him to the graveyard. So yeah, that, there's motifs here. There's like the love theme. There's going to be the beast uh, mo- motif, and you're going to be seeing those reproduced in yeah. in different cues um, uh, to evoke certain um, you know uh, tables that we're looking at right now. If it's going to be between mm-hmm. a scene between Laurie and Boone, we'll have some of the love theme going through it and stuff like that. What did you think of? um the the track 24 on the disc two it's in the extras party uh without choir oh let me see i actually have the cd in my computer if you if you okay. let me just listen to it a little bit you can probably yeah. trim a little bit of this part i didn't want to just... do any trimming that was the whole point of doing oh. this on zoom um i don't remember that one particularly what, okay. what was it like it's party without choir i just remember it's... as as i was listening to it thinking wow this is really different not hearing the you know the uh women or children you know in the background yeah is that what what uh what part of the movie does that music show up do you remember i'm trying to remember now i feel like we should have done a a kind of a listening party for this together that we could have gotten well, some ideas yeah it's tricky because i don't want to you know i don't want to get copyright stricken you know right like, right like um when we go when the audio version of this goes out onto um onto oh gosh what's that that thing everybody listens to music on Spotify Spotify yeah the Spotify is really you know harsh sure. about finding music and shutting you down Yep and then the booklet also goes a little bit into what happened to the soundtrack and what happened to the movie right so they say <laughs> after Danny Elfman had completed the score. Uh, with editor Richard Martin, then they brought it back to the chopping blocks. So we all know about, you know, Fox 20th century wanted reshoots Mm -hmm. and they were afraid that uh, the monster sounds like the good guys, like it is. Yeah. Except they, in, in, they use the, they, they blamed this on Morgan Creek in the booklet, which is like how we all used to think until we learned a little bit more about it. And it seemed like Fox as the distributor was more involved with uh, the, you know, editorial um, uh, interference. 
with right, the movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Richard Martin had worked with Clive Barker and um for for their first attempt at cutting the movie, but then Mark Goldblatt was brought in, right? Because yeah. then they weren't happy with it. There were reshoots, and Mark <laughs> Goldblatt came in as the editor. And if you have some of those more um recent uh deluxe editions of Nightbreed, you will have like interviews with Mark Goldblatt there that we talks about how he approached it. Um, but so some of the music ended up getting cut off from the movie, right? Not all the yeah. quotes were used. And then the movie was definitely cut down uh, a lot uh, for the yeah. theatrical cut. So now we've got these cues back and they even have a little map here at the end for the cue assembly for Nightbreed. They show us, you know, the slate and the cue title for every track. You know, and you get you. I mean, if you're someone who knows what this means, I'm not particularly uh, yeah. uh, versed in cue assembly or what this means, but I think it yeah. means it's like the order in the, which the cues appear in the movie, right? Boy, it sure would have been nice to have this available for the cabal cut and the I know director's the director's cut. cut. Yeah, <clears throat> that would have been crazy because I remember that was one of the problems that they were having back when they were, um, you know, Mark Miller and. Uh, uh, Andrew Furtado, they were editing yeah. that with Clyde Barker yeah. and they had to extend like the soundtrack for certain parts. Right. And they had to yeah. loop, loop it and stuff. Things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they stripped so this would the have soundtrack album, the, the old CD soundtrack album they used for editing the director's cut. They stretched this pretty thin by repeating elements, like you said, looping and stuff. That's right. That's right. And if and they'd the, had the this, they, sounds... that, that would have helped so much. Do you remember those cicada sounds that they kept putting in even when oh, it was yeah. nighttime? When yeah. They... <laughs> yeah. And I was like, it's nighttime. They don't do that at night. <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, this this is good stuff. I mean, this is for completists, and I'm so glad that we got yeah. a extended soundtrack for Lord of Illusions, and now we got an extended soundtrack for Clyde Barker's Nightbreed. So and we you have know, from one Entrada. For, for Candyman too, right? There's the the uh, Candyman one and two Philip Glass. That's right. That's right. C D. Yeah. And that one also had some issues, right? Because when it came out it was just like a bare bones release and then eventually yeah. it got uh, um filled out with more. I also want to bring up that this week unfortunately Douglas Fake, a prolific soundtrack producer and Entrada label founder unfortunately passed away at 72. Oh. So yeah, he passed away this week in uh, California. So yeah, he uh one of his many credits includes the first complete restoration of Leonard Bernstein's On the Waterfront and they released that as a 5 CD version. So Unfortunately, yep, the Entrada label founder passed away this week. And uh well, what uh what an excellent release for us to be discussing about Entrada. Yeah. They've always been really good in putting out um great soundtrack releases. And this one, it's actually disc number how many releases did they do on this? It's special collection volume four hundred and eighty-nine. <laughs> oh, so wow. they almost got five hundred. <laughs> oh, ISC must stand for Entrada Special Collection. ISC yeah. 489. But uh, wow. yep, so you got the, these two CDs. <clears throat> the first one is the original film score with all the cues there, and you got the cue assembly chart. And the yeah. second is that uh, original soundtrack with some extras. If you're into the extras, the waltz is nice, like you said. It's it's yeah. it's crazy that they ended up making a whole track just for a little bit. And I had forgotten that Country Skin is just a countryfied version of an Oingo Boingo song called Skin. And right. I th and from what I understand, the Oingo Boingo song is, you know, a lot more, you know, kind of dark and moody and, not, you know, not a country song. And so it's kind of interesting to take those those kind of uh, creepy lyrics and put them into a country song. And, it, and, and they describe that as kind of a kind of an in joke with the. Um, you know, with Danny Elfman at, at the time when they were making yeah. it. Yeah. The lyrics going, and you take away the skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. But uh, great stuff. When one of the CDs, Nightbreed is written in red and the other one is written in green. Um, yeah. You've got, you've got this great jewel case that, uh, you know, is two sided. So you got the two CDs, they just flick from one to the other. In yeah. the back of the jewel case, you see a picture of Rachel. Yeah. Yep. There's Rachel right there. Uh, yeah, in front of the wall of of the wall of skulls. The wall of yeah, skulls. 
and uh, good stuff. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff here to listen to, yeah. and uh, I want to play this now. I want to play the movie and just play the CD and mute the dialogue and see how yeah. well this syncs up to it. That that could be a, a a watch party for Nightbreed. I guess we could do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had some feedback from the um, <clears throat> from from people on social media because I kind of put it out there. I'm like, hey, do you have this release? What do you think of it? And uh, so on. Some of these seem like people that may not have actually bought the this, you know, this particular release. So this first one was from Big Dagoth on Reddit. He said, ever notice you can sing Danny Elfman's name along to the choral passage on most of his more famous soundtracks? I think that's a thing where any you could do that with anything, right? I mean, I, uh, really? Yeah, I think I think it's a matter of just the metric of this song and the fact that yeah. it's Danny Elfman. It's like yeah. la 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 la, Danny, Danny Elfman, Elfman, Danny Elfman. Elfman. Yeah, 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 if you got that, one, two, three, four, four syllables, that right? Does, and that's that's a funny thing. I never thought about that. Yeah, but you could do that with anything that's four syllables. Do you remember the music for uh, Dark Man? I don't think I've ever seen Dark Man. You've never seen Dark Man with no. Liam Neeson? Oh my gosh, you got to nope. watch that. That's yeah. a it's a great movie. It's got a great. Isn't score. the third one called like Die Dark Man Die? I don't know, but there's one which is the return of the villain from the first one, um, mm -hmm. and that I only saw the first and second. I don't think I've ever seen the third one, but oh. uh, the first one is the best. First one, <laughs> it's just crazy. Like mm -hmm. it's a, the part where. The the way he creates well, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but you gotta watch Dark okay. Man. That's a great soundtrack. All right. Okay. I, I'll do that. I also um there's a new Time Bandits TV show on Apple TV. So now that makes me want to go back and watch the old movie Time Bandits, because I haven't seen that since I was a kid. The Terry Gilliam one? Yeah. Oh, I think I saw that in the theater, but I've never seen it after that. Yeah. I hardly remember. I remember like you, a lot it, of guys. It was on like a pirate night, ship. 1981. And I confuse it with ice pirates, but oh, I know yeah. that now I'm thinking. Not, I know they're probably not the same at all. But in my head, as a little kid, you know, I I confuse you're, those. You're reminding me, and I think I'm mixing a bunch of Terry Gilliam movies together. The one that has Robin Williams as the the moon, the king of the moon. That's not Time Bandits, right? I don't know. Maybe I think I'm thinking about something else. The Baron That's why Marshall's I need to see it again. Yeah, Baron Munchausen. I think I'm thinking about that one. Oh, okay, right. right. Yeah, but, that uh, one yeah, was I've a little seen, later, I think. I've seen the Time Bandits is now a show, yeah. so um, cool. And classic Donkey three two four three said, "Not me misreading this as Nightbreed two. I was like, when the f did that come out? So uh, yeah, I said I said Nightbreed two disc CD collection or something like that, and he just saw Nightbreed two. It's like yeah. I can't win because if I don't say two disc collection everybody thinks i'm talking about the old one because like one guy i talked about it and he's like oh instead of that old cd you should get the mondo you know uh, lp release and like that's not the point the point yeah. is this is a new release and it's got more stuff in it right it's not right. not the format right the the mondo yeah. i think he's talking about the one that has like a drawn uh colorful yeah. like cover yeah. but that's still the mca soundtrack right the exactly original but it's yeah. a it's a really nice looking release but it's not it is know, but it's, it's not, pretty uh, not what we were talking about today though yeah yeah and then um linden 85 says i loved it but i think it's one for the die hard fans was interesting mm. reading the liner notes and the reference to elfman scoring the longer cuts of the film shame we're unlikely to hear uh what was cut the big surprise for me was the unheard section from photos really heartbreaking score that seems to fit the film where Lori calls Boone and gets the machine. It's oh, a yeah. shame they did. They didn't have the whole score when they did the director's cut. They could have avoided changing the score when the cops are exploring Midian. And I presume it's what stopped them from using Doug Bradley's voice in the, what the hell are you doing down here? Your people need you scene. Says, as much as I'd love for a film quality work print of or more deleted material to surface, I think this is the last new Nightbreed material we'll get to see. Oh, it's not. Trust me. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot more stuff out there. Um, 
but uh, a lot to unpack here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's for the diehard fans. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm not sure if you're talking about the length of the music or the price of the release. I yeah. Think. Well, in, 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 in so far as like any extended side soundtrack release is for the diehard fans. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's got, I mean, people don't really buy CDs anymore. So that's one, mm -hmm. one thing you might have against it. Um, another thing is, you know, Nightbreed has a really cult following. I mean, sure. Uh, Clive Barker yeah. fans like us. Um, maybe it's also for, but it's also for diehard Danny Elfman fans, probably like we were saying earlier. Oh, absolutely. And there's people yeah. who just collect the Entrada soundtracks, regardless mm -hmm. of the movie. They just have an entire collection of that. I've I've seen forums of people, they collect uh, these releases uh, pretty religiously. Yeah. Um, and the price was not bad at all. I mean, I think I paid less than $30 for this. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. so... and, and we have a link in our show notes there where you, you can follow to to um, on the blog uh, to to go buy it if you want to. It's still available. It's not. I mean, maybe it's a limited release. I'm not sure, but it's yeah. still available to buy. So. But we are biased diehard fans. So, of course, yeah. we're going to listen to the whole thing and we're going to nerd out and, yeah. and be like, oh, I, I'm glad that they put this the original disc in here too just in case you didn't have the original disc already and they stuck yeah. a few more like things in there like extras it's like wow that's packed all the way to the top mm -hmm. um as far as the uh doug bradley voice yeah you know they they rescored that um they redubbed uh doug's voice with someone else when they made the movie and then for the director's cut they brought back <clears throat> doug bradley uh, and russell chanter recorded some lines with him which yeah. they dubbed uh, Doug Dub. <laughs> yeah, and... but then they didn't bring him back again for the director's cut, so they just used what uh, right. what um, what they had done previously for the yeah. Cabal cut. And when there were scenes that weren't in the Cabal cut, I guess they just you know went with the old voice. Yeah, um, yeah, like like Rachel has several voices in the yeah. Ra cut Rachel has like three that. three different voices in the director's cut. But absolutely, if they had this soundtrack release, if they had these tapes back when they were scoring the movie, they probably could have done a better job of it, even though yeah. they didn't have really a composer doing the scoring for the movie when they were doing yeah. the director's cut. This was kind of more like a semi-professional job, I would say. So, yeah. yeah but I mean, I guess, how, great... the, I guess the question is, how many times do we want to re keep recutting Nightbreed? Because it's been done, it's probably like nine times now so far with all of the, you know, yeah, different versions I mean, of the Cabal cut and then sure. the director's cut and the 2017 Cabal cut. And so they, yeah, they could do it again and have the whole thing in 4K maybe if they rescanned all that footage and re-edited the film yep. and, and invited some of the actors to put their voices back in. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm really like happy. A lot of with all a lot the things of cogs that we have. have to turn for that to happen, yeah. you know, it's a uh, lot like, of people. Yeah. Some people are in the U.S., some people are in the yeah. U.K., and that already throws a little bit of a wrench in it. I don't yeah. know. I mean, you never know what the the, the future brings. All it requires yeah. is someone with a vision and someone with the resources to decide that that's something they want to do. Um, or if uh, another Night Breed release is going to come out like a sequel or a TV series, you know, then then uh, if that stuff is is out or, or on its way, then in order to capitalize that, they'll want to make a new release of Nightbreed. Yeah, look at look at us. We were just talking about Time Bandits coming back as a TV show. I mean, Time Bandits yeah. was a movie way back when. So who knows? Yeah. Maybe there'll, there will be that TV show from Nightbreed that they keep trying to get off the yeah. ground. Maybe they should uh, go to Apple TV. I, yeah, from, from, you know, your lips to um, God's ears, you know? Yeah. But, um, yeah, so um, and then someone says, extremely overlooked Elfman score from the course, from the, of course, fantastic Barker film. He is, has several evocative and captivating moments. I know, yeah. man. It's like that photos cue. Everybody seems to like that. Um, yeah. The dream, you know, uh, Laurie well, enters I, I kind of wonder if, if, the, if this was James Parsons and this comment, doesn't really clarify whether he's actually got this particular release or whether he's just talking about the Nightbreed soundtrack in general. Sure. He might be talking about yeah. uh, overall. 
Yeah. But uh, definitely has very evocative and captivating moments, like yeah. where he enters Midian, for example, or you know the dream sequence. Um, a lot of good stuff. They even have they even have the Krem Puff murder with Arnie. You remember Arnie in the hotel? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Sweet grass yeah. in or whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they even have that cue in here. Uh, Cream Puff yeah. murder. Uh, militia montage, smoky love reprise. That's a scene in the in the jailhouse cell. Yeah, uh, Igerman's moment, berserker party. Oh yeah, that's when they come out. Yeah, finale and end credits. And Baphomet calls was also a pretty good one. When uh, they go down to the tabernacle, uh, Baphomet calls is also a pretty good cue. Yeah, boom. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for your feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. It's always great to have feedback from Reddit. Yeah. And uh, was this from the Nightbreed subreddit or from the Clive Barker subreddit? That was the Clive Barker subreddit. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we want to, of course, thank our Patreon subscribers. And I haven't double checked to see if there were any new ones yet. But definitely, um, definitely thanks to uh, David Anderson, Eric Van de Holt, and Daniel Elvin. Of course, the best way to support this podcast is through our Patreon at patreon.com slash BarkerCast589. Our subscribers will get exclusive access to content not available anywhere else, like our Collector's Corner video series, Rare Barker videos, and early behind-the-scenes stuff. Plus, backers in the $10 tier will also be able to choose an episode topic. And we might mail you something once in a while, depending on your location. Our supporters also get access to the exclusive channel in our Discord server. We'll be forever grateful if you consider helping us out and subscribing to our Patreon. So what's new on Patreon? Man, now I wish there was a Nightbreed too. They wanted well, it to be I, a yeah, Nightbreed 2 I, I and think, 3, right? I think the TV series would be awesome. Because then, then they could tell the story in, in as long much time as they need. You know, and, and maybe even go through the first movie and then go into a sequel. Yeah, I mean, I don't understand why... Morgan Creek was trying to get, like, Young Guns as a TV show, and they, they got yeah. off the ground... Uh, um, that one with the twins, uh, with Jeremy Aaron's movie. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh man, uh, Dead Ringers. Um, right. They made a TV show with a, a different actress uh, uh, playing the two yeah. twins, and like, why can't they come out of the, you know, put, yeah. make a TV show for Nightbreed? It's um. Well, and when that happens, we we, we just we we we're, we're going to want TV shows of every Clive Barker book. Uh, yeah. yeah yeah i you know i can't argue with that i mean <laughs> like i said I, I i i wish that uh it doesn't it doesn't have to be a super expensive 200 million dollar movie but like he has yeah. it, there's so many cool stories that have never been turned into scripts yeah. like like um you know uh sex death and starshine or right pig blood blues they could be like really low uh, budget movies. I mean, mm -hmm. the Pig Blood Blues, especially, or or even um, the Bell's Children. They could yeah. just make that with a a, a, a small budget, uh, a small cast, in a couple of locations. I mean, all it takes is someone with again the vision and the resources to get that done. Yeah. Oh, I was supposed to have said a while back. Um, what are what's coming soon on collectors or I mean on Patreon where I'm my collectors corner Jericho thing is about half done. I expect to get it done today. Uh, if I don't have a lot of editing to do on this episode. So, um, yeah, so that, that should be done. Uh, are any of how about the ones that you're working on? Yeah, we should get those done this weekend too. Um, okay. looks like Ed and, uh, Kyle, have met yeah. again this week and they were opening up the mold to find out what's going on with that mask. So I already saw the mask came out and uh, it it looks good. I don't know if it fits yeah. Kyle's head yet, but uh, I, I've, I've got more but, pictures to add a second part to that. So he maybe sent me now some I... pictures too, and pictures of a round um, Hellraiser six puzzle box. Oh, really? That he was working on. Yeah. Cool. Cool. 
yeah, yeah. so I got some pictures. They were uh, they were doing that yesterday, and uh, Ed sent me a text. I got to talk to him today and uh, see if we can finish that. I'll send you what I've got in case there's different pictures that he sent me. I don't know why he doesn't just send you know right to both of us at the same time. Yeah, I think that would save him some time. Sure. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. I've got a lot of pictures. Yep. You can see those too. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Um, what else is going on? Oh, uh, yeah. So coming ne- soon, uh, we'll have Jericho Squad coming in uh, mid August. Um, we'll be talking about the Phantasmagoria Hellraiser interview book. That's going to be a lot of reading. So I probably should get started on reading that. And um, the 4K Rawhead Rex we'll be talking about. I just did, I just, uh, to prepare for this, I kind of looked at the old Blu-ray version. I mean, it's not that old, but the Blu-ray, you know, HD version compared to the 4K version. Yeah. And it's confusing looking at the special features on there because I think they give them different names. Oh, I know that they had the guy who played Raw Hex is supposed to be in those uh, bonus Yeah, features, there's an right? interview interview with him, right? And so right. on one of them, they give it a title. And then it says interview with so-and-so who played Rawhead Rex. But on the other one, it just says interview with his, you know, his name. Right, right. They didn't so put the, the full title of the feature. Yeah. And so all of the interviews are labeled like that on the new release, but yeah. on the Blu-ray they aren't. And so it's hard to, it, it, it at a glance, it's, you can't really tell if it has all the same features, but it's really close. I'm not sure. But we we can get into that more also when we when we cover it, um, and then of course we'll get back to Boom Hellraiser comics discussion with the Road Below, I think is the one we're on now, right? That's yeah, right. Because we just finished um, the Dark Watch, and so we'll. And that's going to be, the... I think, another six issue run. I yeah, think. the Road Below, and then the Bestiary, and then mm-hmm. we'll do the the anthology, the ones that were put out by Seraphim. Yeah, the two uh, uh, anthology one and two. Yeah, yeah, and then and um and then Quartet of Torment will come back with Hellraiser three, the disc three of the Hellraiser Quartet of Torment will cover. We're really dragging that out, you know. I guess it's, but it's really too much to talk about the whole release in one, uh, in one episode. That's right. We might, yeah. we might get uh, Peter Atkins to come back for the third Hellraiser or the fourth Hellraiser, but uh, yeah, or both, yeah, or both. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, this podcast, having no beginning, will have no end. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our Discord server. The best way to support us is to buy our book, The Barker Cast Interviews, Occupy Midian, available in hardcover on Amazon and ebook on Amazon and Apple Books. Fundraiser 10 is all about Patreon this year. Become a patron to get access to exclusive stuff, pick an episode topic, and maybe even get cool stuff in the mail. You can also buy a t shirt on our T Public store. Go to tpublic.com and search for Barker Cast. Leave a message for us using the SpeakPipe link on our blog. Opening and ending music generously provided by Ray Norrish. Thanks for listening.